All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is November 26th, 2022. And as we count down the days to the solstice, to the that 14th to the 21st of December, that highest watch of all watches in human history that people have been seeking and searching for the last 2,000 years. As you know, we believe, I believe with all of my heart, we have revealed the truth of that season and time. We did it by the 70 years of Israel. We've done it by the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. Revealed that that the the end of days isn't one set of seven years, but it is two sets of seven years, and really it's it's three. But the first seven was this bride getting ready, this Gentile spirit filled in Christ group being prepared to go pre trib. We know that pre trib, mid trib, post trib are all true. It's the ten percent bride of Christ first. It's the main harvest rapture of the great multitude in the seventh year of seals. And the Lord returning, feet down on the Mount of Olives at the 14th year. We have gone through this. We have shown it for five years. We have been breaking down and digging deeper and deeper and deeper. These things of that we have been given to understand that the Spirit has absolutely 100% unequivocally led us in the revelation of as we have diligently sought him, they have been proven out. And it's always simply been a matter of when it will start. And we have understood the four plus the 70. We've been watching it for over two years now. And we are at that moment in December. But until that time comes, we know, I know, you guys know that we will continue to diligently seek and search out the Lord in his word and draw closer and closer in the revelation of himself. It's all about the word. The whole thing is his word. This is what we're doing. This is what we spend our time doing. This is what I've been doing full time now for what, four years? Well, actually four and a half. I didn't, wasn't full time right away, but a little about four and a half, well, getting close to five years now, doing this full time because on that beautiful moment, that day on September 8th, 2017, I began to understand something. And I always remembered Chuck Missler saying, when you see something that catches your attention and makes you say, wait a second, that is the spirit prompting you. And oh my goodness, what a journey in the revelation of our lord and savior jesus christ it has been ever since it's it's indescribable to be able to go into the scriptures as we do and pull out these things throughout the bible from in the beginning to the end of revelation 22 and pull out all of these things pertaining to the end of days, not only pertaining to the end of days, but they brought clarity to the is, which are the things from the time of Christ until the escape. And they brought clarity and revelation to things all the way back in creation. It is astounding. It is astonishing. <laughs> Most of these things, I mean, we this has happened hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds, probably even into the couple few thousand times that we have brought about understanding in his revelation for the end that we didn't even know existed hundreds upon hundreds we we, we didn't even know the world has never heard of it the world has never understood these things were, were even connected neither did we until the spirit said here you go will you take the bait and on September 8th, 2017, I took the bait and I haven't turned back since. Didn't matter who came against us. Doesn't matter what they call us. It's always Christians, of course. It's, it's usually never the people outside. They just don't believe, right? It didn't matter what comes against us. Because the truth 
is the truth. And when you see it, <clears throat> your mind is blown and you are never the same again when you read the scriptures because understanding starts to come in you. The spirit starts to reveal it to you and all of these things that you've had questions for start to line up and start to make sense and they're understood and you see the gospels in a light that that had been brought a little bit of confusion in the past but we would have to read over well we don't have to do that anymore because we know their purpose was prophetic built in to the gospels well today we are going into a very deep end of the pool so for anybody that's new before we get there i want to let you know you really must start with this intro series right here the revealed end time study note series come here realtor if you just come into this playlist and watch these first three videos these bible studies a 30 minute bible study for you to begin to understand who the gospels are speaking to and whenever you go into some of these videos and you see that I have a, a, a typed out thing that I'm reading from, you can come into the description box below the video, find the link, print it off yourself, follow along, make notes, highlight, see it all for yourself. That's all I ask. I'm not trying to convince anybody. I am simply sharing the revelation and it is up to you to pray on it, and it is up to you to seek it out. And if you have ever been diligent, if you have ever had questions within the Gospels, and how come there seems to be contradictions within them, we'll get ready for the answers. That's right. No skirting about. No skirting about and just saying, oh, well, it's, it's a perspective. Well, perspectives never gave the understanding as to why Jesus in Luke was arrayed in a gorgeous robe, which means white, radiant, beautiful. And why in Mark at the cross, going to the cross, he was arrayed in purple. And in Matthew, he was arrayed in scarlet. Were they colorblind? Nope. It was prophecy built into the scriptures. You're going to find out that as you begin to understand in this 30-minute intro, you're going to realize for the first time in your life that Luke is written to the bride of Christ, Mark is written to the sleeping church or the house of Israel or the world because the 10 tribes, they went out and they mingled with all the Gentiles. They're scattered throughout the earth. And that Matthew is written to the Jews. And that's why there's only 14, 15 million Jews around the world. You see, Matthew is written to Judah. Mark is written to the house of Israel. Luke is written to the bride of Christ. These are the synoptic gospels. And in the end of days, you're going to realize Luke is the pre-trib bride of Christ that we're talking about in December. Mark is the sleeping church, church, great multitude rapture. They will endure seals. Many will die, but the majority will survive. And they will be part of the great multitude rapture in the seventh year of seals. Matthew is the seven years of trumpets. And before Matthew's seven years of trumpet starts, they're going to be scattered shortly after the escape of the bride of Christ and the 14 years, the first seven begins, it's going to begin with an attack on Jerusalem and they are going to be scattered. And for seven years, they're going to be removed from the land while the tribulation of seals is taking place against the world with the Antichrist and the false prophet. Then it's the seven years of Matthew after the rapture of the church of the great multitude in the seventh year of seals. And then it's the seven years of trumpets. It sounds like you think you're, I could hear some of you if you're new thinking this guy has lost his lunch. This guy is, this guy is, you know, he, he's, he's losing it. I promise you with all of my heart. If you spend 30 minutes in a Bible study, you will begin to understand. And if you want to understand it more, when you go into the description box below, you can go to the link or just go to ministryrevealed.com 
and get um go all the videos are there for free all of the teachings all of the the printouts the forms everything you're going to see me show and talk about are all there in the ministry uh website and you can join us in the forum there's about 1100 people worldwide praying watching like-minded brothers and sisters from all over the world but please start with watching these videos and i'm also mentioning the website because of the book I wrote a book back in uh, march of 2020 i think it was somewhere around march to march april 2020 something like that and chapter one goes into greater detail of what you're going to begin to understand in this 30 minute video then come to this second 30 minute video these are the two keys you're going to then begin as you begin to understand who the gospels are speaking to you're going to realize that the tribulation and maybe you've questioned why or how on earth could the tribulation take place in seven years it's just it's too much this can't all fit well you're correct you're absolutely right because it's 14 years it's seven of seals and seven of trumpets seven for mark seven for matthew and when you begin to understand that this is the video a 30 minute bible study and when you go to the book again you can you can read the book in english from the website you can download the pdf of the book for free in five different languages um and if you decide you you like a paperback and you can share it and you can scribble and make notes on it you can get the paperback from amazon as well in chapter two it delves into the greater detail of this revelation of the 14 years and you're going to see it is absolutely everywhere and that in this 14 years that is the seven of seals the seven of trumpets but there was a seven year period that came first but it's not really it's not really uh, expressed very well but you're going to see it as you go into it as you go into the book and as you start reading but it's really a focus luke's portion is really a focus of a period of time of about 50 40 to 50 days above the start of those 14 years okay once you do begin to understand these things you'll be able to come into this 11th video and understand the discourses revealed in that 11th video luke mark and matthew you'll see why luke's discourse is vastly different from the other two it's going to blow your mind and then what i want you to do after you've begun to understand these and you've studied these a little bit and you said oh my goodness you're going to the number one thing you're going to say is how on earth has this all been missed for all these 2000 years the answer is it's all because of matthew in this lengthy detailed video you are going to understand the reason all of this had been missed is because all of our lives we have been taught for hundreds of years from the gospel of matthew the church knows that the Gospel of Matthew was written by a Jew for the Jews. Never fully understood. They've got ideas on Mark and on Luke, but never really understood it. So what they thought was that it was simply a perspective of Mark and a perspective of Luke, which is why they could never answer the questions of these things that seemed contradictions. These, these apparent contradictions have caused people to walk away from their faith because nobody could answer them correctly had caused Arabs, Muslims, I mean, to come against and say, hey, you guys can't explain this. You can't explain this. And in turn, they say, see, this book, it proves that this was written by men. We reveal in this ministry that it absolutely is not written by men. And this revelation is so huge. This first one here and the understanding that comes from because it's, it's all because of Matthew is so huge it turns the tables on all who would come against for the contradictions in the gospels it's going to blow your mind and the reason we never saw it is because even though people have seen scriptures of pre-trib mid-trib and post-trib if you're reading from the from the from the viewpoint of matthew all you think is what there's seven years for judah you know why because it's as if you're at the end of mark nobody realized that hey 
Mark is part of the story too. When you realize who Mark is written to, and it's the seven years of seals, you realize why so many think the great multitude rapture comes first because they think there's only seven years coming for the Jews. And they're completely unprepared because they've been told everybody gets to go first. That is how important this revelation is. These revelations are. And this one will lay out a bunch of that understanding for you. I promise you, it is worth every single moment of your time. I am not lying to you. Ask the thousands of people in this ministry, ask them in the form for yourself, pray and ask the Lord to reveal it to you, to speak, to, to let it be known that it's truth and spend the time in it for yourself studying it. You will not be disappointed. Well, as we move on from this, guys, oh, I wanted to share with you guys this right here. I told you guys in the last video that um, we're working on a puzzle. So our sister Trisha had a great idea for building a puzzle. And so there's going to be guidelines and so forth. You know, the, the middle pieces of the puzzle will be the four Gospels. And it's going to kind of look like this, but it's going to look nice. So we're going to see uh, if a brother or sister who has the ability and has the time, we're going to make this like this quadrant one color, this quadrant another color. So there'll be four colors. And we're going to have things like the, the key points that are like the key cornerstones of the ministry. And this, of course, is going to be the center because who the Gospels are speaking to is, is the number one piece in the Revelation. And this will be like, say, a, a dark blue, right? A nice dark, bright blue. And then it'll get lighter, 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 lighter. And then in the middle, it will be bright white. And each of these puzzle pieces... Like, for example, these that go along the edge are like things that we know that we know. So these are the absolute cornerstones. And then these are other pieces connected to them that are going to be the parts that we just know that we know also. That are directly connected, that we have proven unequivocally with Scripture. Okay, so kind of start to look like this. And we're gonna have these pieces filled in, and we're gonna do a video in, in the in the coming week or so. And we're gonna I'm gonna get your insight to find out what other pieces, names you would like for some of these pieces. But it's gonna look like a puzzle. It's gonna look kind of 3D ish. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to click on the puzzle piece. So anybody who comes, will be able to go. Well, what do they know about the 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 70 years and the four? What's this all about? What's this creation fractal that they talk about? the 14 years in the pre-trip, they'll be able to click on this puzzle piece and it'll bring up information about it. It'll bring video links. It'll bring up uh, to like this one here, the 14 years trip. It'll bring up the link to the video of the 14 year intro and maybe one other video. It'll bring up uh, verses and other parts in there, maybe a chart or two that's in it. The open books, well, the open books is one like we're going to do today. The chapters to years would be one when they click on it. So every puzzle piece, when they click on it, will bring up the info that people can go up and look into it. Pretty cool, right? So we can thank Trisha for that. It's going to be a little bit of work, but it was Trisha's idea. I thought it was a great idea, and that's what we're going to do. You can see, like more 3D, it's going to look very puzzle-esque, just like that, all right? And so... With that, I want to let you guys know that we're working on that as well. And we're going to have a, a, a live show and, and make it very interactive for you guys to, to bring some of your thoughts on some of these puzzle pieces. Not the corners but or the edges, but some of the inner parts that were really important for you and that you thought were just, uh, were just so fantastic that you think, like, if I didn't already have it there, you could say, well, what about this one? And we'll talk those through and so forth. So that'll be very fun and very interactive as well. So... As we get going today, as I had mentioned uh, in, in the last probably two or three videos, there's been a number of people requesting I do another chapters to years video. And for anybody that doesn't know what that means, that means this right here. A lot of people are like, what on earth are you talking about chapters to years? Well, you saw in that puzzle piece, that one that said the open books. Or when you go to the ministry 
And it says, where the 14 years tribulation understanding and the open books are revealed. These open books are not only the gospels that have been opened, they are the key. They are the absolute key to understanding it. But it's these books right here. Hosea, Zechariah, John, Acts, Ezekiel, Psalms, Genesis, Hebrews, Exodus, and Judges. We have gone into these books, and I got to tell you, a lot of people wonder, how on earth did, did I discover along the way that within each of these chapters, there's insight to the is to come. And it's inc absolutely incredible. And how it all started, and first of all, you got to understand, it, it didn't just happen just all at the beginning. How it started, of course, was, was this realization first of who the Gospels were speaking to, then the revelation of the 14 years. They were one and two. And when you understood, and I was able to prove from so many places, it, it got crazy, and it's even crazier now <laughs> to be able to show all of the places that it relates and that proves that it's 14 years. As that continued to develop, and we were able to show it with like great pieces of scripture like this. For those that are new, let me, sh let me show you one example as we delve into the, um, as we delve into these chapters to years. Because I need to kind of set the tone for somebody that's new that hadn't seen this before. One place you can go, very easy, is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Paul says, above 14 years, the first one goes to the third heaven. Then there was a caught up, and they go to, the, they go to paradise. And then he says, and later on he says, then this is the third time I am now coming to you. I'm not bringing you any burdens. And so what do you see? You see a taking to the third heaven. That's the pre-trib rapture. You see a group going as the rapture, the was caught up. They're going to paradise. And the third time he's now coming to them. So you have a taking, a taking, and a return. That's the pre, the mid, the post. It's absolutely phenomenal. And it's 14 years. Well, you also find it here in Psalms 90 and 10. And what you have to understand is this is why for us, the 70 years is so important. It should be super important for anybody that studies prophecy. But I don't know of anybody else who's really looking at it because everybody believes that 2017, 2018, it was over. So we must have misunderstood something. Well, that's not the case. It was that we had still missed a piece of the understanding. And of course, you all know the understanding comes from Luke chapter 13 and from uh, Leviticus 19, that it was three years that they couldn't take when they came into the land. The fourth year was to give it to the Lord for all the trees, all the fruit from all the trees. And then the fifth year forward was theirs. And we know when Israel came into the land, <clears throat> for example, right? We know when Israel came into the land in 1948, there was four years left in their Shemitah year cycle they discovered or they decided when they came into the land that they had four years left in a Shemitah cycle before 1952 started the new Shemitah year cycle. Now, we didn't do this knowing that they had done that. This chart here was discovered through us in the revelation of knowing that the end of days is two sets of seven years that remain and so all we did is we would go back from the last two sevens and i said what if we count back all the shemitah years or all the sabbath years all the way back to the birth of christ and many of you guys know the story that when i did we realized that the number of sabbath years starting here equaled 289 sabbath years to this year we're in right now for those that are new you're going to go want to go watch the video called the final piece you need to know that the sun is off by two months and they know it and you need to know that the moon is off by about 11 and a quarter days per year and they know it which throws 
everything off in the calendars. Well, we discovered the count with the two months off of the sun and the account for the moon being off. And when we made the account, it was absolutely phenomenal. It equaled unleavened bread at the summer solstice and feast of tabernacles at the winter solstice. It'll blow your mind. But what happened in going back and counting all of these Sabbath years, we realized that you see 28 to 29 AD. So, you know, I, I used to think it was fall to fall, you know, kind of fall to fall, right? Right at the, the year's end, at the circuit of the sun, at the, at the, at the uh, solstice, Jesus is born. And what happens? It said Jesus began to be about 30 years old in Luke chapter in Luke chapter 3. And it said it was the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. Well, in the in the Shroud of Turin, it said that there were coins that were found on Jesus's eyes that they could their laser technology was able to discover that there were coins that were minted in 29 AD that was that were said to be the 16th year of Tiberius Caesar. You see, at which time, what? Jesus would have turned 31. It lined up exactly with what we had discovered in going back and counting the Shemitah years. But what got even crazier is we knew that what was important for us in the end of days was the end of 70 years. That was the key piece, right? So it was when the 70th year truly comes to the end in the Lord God's eyes from how he established everything in the creation, as we've covered here many times, that when we went back 70 years and counted back 70 years, it began 1952 to 1953 as year one. And it just so happened, we were shown information that when the Jews came back into the land, they had decided on through their studies that there were four years left in the Shemitah cycle and the new one would begin in 5253. Which is why this year for the Jews, it was a Shemitah year until, of course, the time of, uh, of Tishri on their calendar. But the Lord God doesn't count from there. We have the revelation of where God, excuse me, is counting from, and we are still in this 70th year. This 70th year and this seventh year. You see, there were seven years, and when this seventh year is done, the 70th year in the Lord God's eyes are over, and the 14 years begin. And look at what the total is, you see? It's the 21 years. The big story, the big picture story, is 21 years and then the final jubilee the 22nd year but these seven years they're not tribulation they're him being excited as jacob was excited to get his bride excited to to for the spirit to be waking up his bride to preparing his first fruits that group being taken out to be sent to the lord first this is what's been happening those who will be co-heirs, those who are in Christ, spirit-filled, are going first. And then it's the 14 years of seals and trumpets that follow. So you see, there is a big picture of what we call 21 or 22 years. And there's the tribulation portion, which again is that 14th or that 15th. So you see, it's the same thing. What is it also? It's the Jubilee. You see, it's the last five sevens, right? Seven, 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 seven. It's the last five sevens. But two of the last, uh, two of the seven um, Sabbaths of the 49 are tribulation years. Okay? So I wanted you to see that, that it's a big picture is 21 and the tribulation portion after the prepared group in Christ, spirit filled or removed, then it's the 14, seven of seals and seven of trumpets. Is It blows me away. You know, it's so exciting 
when once this was discovered and at the time of christ and those coins and everything lines up exactly which is what makes this season and time we're in so so exciting so exciting and a lot of people wanted me now to get into delving into this chapters to years now we do have in the book chapters to years we do have a video already of chapters to years but it was done a little while back we know a lot more even than we did back then did it change anything zero the only thing that changed over the years was understanding when it was going to start we were no different than everybody else looking from 2017 to 2018 at the latest <clears throat> and then when that didn't happen we thought there was a difference of a year because of government we looked at all sorts of things until about two and a half three years ago now we we came across uh was shared with us i discovered well as i said i i discovered the 289 shemitas and the word 289 in greek is only used one time and it's in luke 13 and it's talking about the three years i've come and the fourth year let it be dunged and if not then cut it down and then we were shared leviticus 19 and in leviticus 19 got the revelation that hey it was three years fourth to the lord and from the fifth forward and from the fifth forward was now theirs to begin to take from which means this is where the count began that was super exciting because this is where we are we are right here waiting for these to begin we've covered a lot of john 7 recently we've covered a lot of genesis 7 recently we've talked about psalms 18 quite a bit but <clears throat> today as we get started we're going to start in psalms and as i was preparing for this man i was doing my best to try to not to go into every detail because obviously that is a lot of chapters to cover we are not going to go into all of them but we are going to go into such key pieces i mean some of them i just couldn't go over i mean some of them i couldn't skip over i like i have to do it you see i've got every tab open from here all the way to here and it wasn't even all the tabs i could have opened i just didn't want to get rid of this our sister uh, jodell sent me a link i haven't used it yet so that all of these tabs i can put into a folder and then just bring them back when i need them but i haven't used it yet it would have been good for me to figure it out before tonight because i could have loaded all 70 tabs <laughs> yep all 70 tabs i could have used tonight for tonight's video but i know it so well that i'm just going to go over a lot of it just from from memory from the understanding that i have so as we get going we're going to start in the psalms and <laughs> it's going to blow you away and why is it important what's the big deal so that people can understand so that people could see and understand events that are coming at certain times i believe one of the big things that we're doing here in this ministry is helping prepare a group of workers and this is going to help in that preparation for one <laughs> it's not only that i believe it's part of the reason but I don't believe it's the only reason. I believe we're being rewarded for diligently seeking the Lord. He's revealing himself in his word to us in mysteries that had been sealed in the books since the beginning of creation. That's how powerful this is. And what are some of the things that we know? Well, we know that the bride of Christ goes first we know that there's the the 50 days and within the 50 days the son of man is here for 40 days warning before the 14 years begins we know when it begins it'll begin with an attack on jerusalem the the second attack in israel but the the big one in jerusalem we know that the antichrist shows up in the third year approximately of seals about two and a half years in after world war three we know a false prophet is there with them we know they're going to flee into the wilderness we know that in the seventh year or at the end of the six years of seals 
the lord is returning on heavenly mount zion they're going to look up and say ah what is this <coughs> and we know in the seventh year the 144,000 are going to be sealed we know the type uh, the typology of the person they relate to that that represents them we know the lord is going to be here as melchizedek as priest and king and it'll start in the seventh year uh, of, of seals. Uh, we know in the eighth year, which is the beginning of trumpets, the rapture has happened. And now heavenly Mount Zion is established in Jerusalem. They're going to start rebuilding the city and the streets and the temple. Judah will be there as well. They're going to come in as well at the time with the great multitude rapture. Judah's coming too. Remember what Judah's looking for. They're looking for their conquering, victorious Messiah. Well, that's what he's doing at the end of seals. That Ezekiel 39 war, look where it is. When he comes at the end of the sixth year of seals. What else do we know? They're rebuilding the city and the streets. And then by the 11th year, in the 11th year, which is going to be about 10 and a half years in. So 10 years will have passed. Seven of seals three of trumpets and then a few months in about six months or so into the 11th year or about 10 and a half years in satan is going to be cast down satan is going to be cast down messiah is going to be cut off there's going to be battles is going to be fleeing those that were in jerusalem on mount zion with him which is paradise are going to be taken into the wilderness to a place protected and they're going to remain there for the rest of the first half uh, sorry for the rest of the second half of that 11th year the next full year the next full year right to the end of the 14th year they're going to remain there for the final three and a half years and when the lord is returned feet down on the mount of olives in the 14th year they will be brought back at the end of that year and in the final jubilee year they will dwell together as as united as brothers each of them will receive their division and their portion of land in jerusalem in the land of israel and they will dwell together in unity it's incredible these are some key things that we know and that we understand in this period of time you see we know again when you go back to it's all because of matthew when the when christians in the church don't realize that there's seven years of seals that represent mark's portion first what are they all expecting they're waiting for the same thing the jews are waiting for that the messiah is going to come destroy their enemies and start rebuilding the, the third temple hello so what are the christians because they don't know the tribulation of seals that's coming for them they're they're in agreement with the jews but they conflict it and they mix it together and they say it's the antichrist that's going to do it they're going to rebuild the temple and antichrist is going to step in and proclaim it no 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 that's not how it works satan is going to step in and, and claim it but it wasn't antichrist that built it it wasn't Christ, it wasn't the Antichrist that was overseeing it or Satan that was overseeing in the building. It was the Lord himself. And you're going to see it even in the scriptures. He even tells us, and guess what? It's in the chapters to years. Do you think it should be up here in seals somewhere? Maybe mid seals, early seals, or do you think it should be somewhere around the first part of trumpets? Darn straight, first part of trumpets, right? We've seen it more than one place. Zechariah 8 is one we go to often. But when Satan is cast down, then there's a cutting off, right? Christ can't be here and be dwelling and all this stuff. They were all there in the land. Everything was great. And then Satan was cast down. The pit is opened at the fifth trumpet. You see, these are things we know. Well, now I'm about to go into these chapters to years and I'm about to blow your mind to show you these events that we all know now very very well and we know the approximate timing 
within their years by give or take a couple, three months. And they all line up with events spoken about in these chapters. Are we going to be able to cover it all? Are we going to go out into absolutely everything? No. <laughs> no, we're not. But we are going to cover a whole bunch of them. And it is going to blow your mind. So for anybody that's new, you see this right here? This is why I went into some of those other parts as we were starting. Because it says, the days of our years are three score and ten, which is 70. And if by reason of strength, they're four score years, which is 80. <laughs> you see, what do people want to do now? Well, they'll say, well, 70 is already passed. So it must be 73. Well, no, now 74 is done according to them. That only leaves six years to 80. Well, how does this fly away relate to us? It doesn't. This is mid-trumpets when Satan comes and they fly away. This is 70 to 80 years, meaning when 70 is over, you don't say 70, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 80. It's from 70 to 80 years, which means 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80. That's 10 years. You see that? It's what? It's 10 years. Seven years of seals, three years of trumpets. There's 10 years complete. 10 years complete. And then what? See, it's saying those 10 years are going to be labor and sorrow. The word labor and sorrow, when you go into right here, when you go into the Strong's Concordance, which is why this program ESORT is so awesome, when you come into it, it says their strength is labor. It's pain, travail, sorrow. It's tribulation, guys. It means tribulation, affliction, trouble, sorrow, wickedness. It's 10 years of tribulation. Seals and trumpets, hello. And then it says, for it is soon cut off. Soon is a short period of time. What would be the short period of time? I believe the next six months, the first half of the 11th year, because 10 is fulfilled. So shortly in, a few months in to the 11th year would be about 10 and a half years. What happens at 10 and a half years? You're going to see as we go through some of these, Satan is cast down. The vintage of old, the, the, the cedar tree is cast down, and you're going to see it all over the place in the chapters where it should be. And then what does it say? For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Well, who flies away when Satan, when Satan is, is cast down and they're all cut off from being there? They all fly away into the wilderness, right? Well, that's exactly what you read in Revelation chapter 12. Here's all your stuff about seals. Here's the rapture of the great multitude in the seventh year. You have 1260, the first half of trumpets, while there's a battle going on in the heavens until Satan and his angels lose and are cast down. It's at the fifth trumpet, the first woe. Oh, look at that. Woe, just like the first woe of the fifth trumpet. What does he then do? He goes after the woman. And what does he do? And the woman were given two great wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness unto a place where she is nourished for a time, one year, comma, and means plus, times, which means two years, comma, and, which means plus, that means three, and a half time. Three and a half years. So what was the total that you get from Psalms 90 and 10? You get 10 years about six months and three and a half years. What's the total when Satan's cast down and the cutoff happens and they flee away into the wilderness for the last three and a half years till it's all over? 14 years. When does it all begin? At the end of 70 years. The end of 70 years. It's so, so incredibly exciting. Now, let me show you where we're going to start. We're going to start in Psalms. 
as we've already touched on some of these things and showed little parts and pieces here. Let me show you how it started with Psalms. Now, I remembered hearing about this years ago, but it wasn't how I came across the revelation because it doesn't line up the same. And you're going to see what I'm talking about in a moment. And I was watching a guy years ago who thought that he had continued the Psalms and gone beyond what J.R. Church had found. So J.R. Church was on a radio show about 30 years ago talking about what he had discovered in the Psalms. And so this guy that I was watching years ago, I would watch a couple of his videos, but it, they're just it, something wasn't there. It wasn't making sense. And at that time, I hadn't yet receive the revelation of the gospels in the 14 years or any of these things yet and as it started coming i started to remember something about this things going on with psalms and so what had happened was jr church some 30 years ago started talking about these hidden prophecies in the psalms and that's what this guy's now talking about here this was written in 2017 and uh so this guy talks about having bought the book and at that time, he had made the highlights up to 1986 when he had published the book. And what the premise was, was he had discovered that there seemed to be things that were in alignment within these chapters because you realize that the book of Psalms was the 19th chapter of the Bible, right? Psalms was the 19th chapter of the Bible. And so Psalms 19, like 1900 and one, Psalms 1900 and two. And he started going through these things <clears throat> and he started finding these hidden prophecies within verses. Not that it details every single piece of event, but that it details the verses within it that give you clues and insight to these events. And this guy had found it really cool. Many people had talked about it. We've shared this as well from... Uh, Luke chapter 24, 40 through, 44 through 45, where Jesus is saying that things that must yet be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. We talked about this, right? And back in the day, as I started to reveal the revelation of the Psalms, I got excited because we had, un we had read this and said, well, we now have these revelations in the Psalms. We were starting to get the prophets and we didn't yet know anything in the law right? The first five books of Moses. Now we do. And so this guy is, is talking about what happens. And he says, for example, you know, go to Psalms 19, uh, go to chapter 44. And it talks about, uh, thou has given us like sheep anoint, uh, appointed for meat, and has scattered us among the heathen, right? Think of after World War II, they, you know, they were appointed for meat, they were scattered. Yea, for thy sake, are we killed all day long? We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And it was chapter 44 that this was in. And of course, we know the Nazis and everything else. And so he was able to find these things related within the chapters to years going into Psalms. And look at what this guy says. As he began his study, he was surprised to see how prophecy by chapter aligned with actual fulfillment by year isn't that amazing i'd never read this before guys and we call it the chapters to years revelation it's so incredible this happens to us all the time with these connections and so as you go through this like it said he goes up to about 1986 and for everybody it kind of falls off they said after 1999 right they they couldn't find any connecting verses well this guy who wrote this believes that he can find other ones going into the 2000s not necessarily something every year and then he only gets to about 2018 and he believes he's got some pieces okay but isn't it interesting it stops in his connection to 2018 thinking maybe there's a a psalms 118 connection but of course, it's last days and it's connected to Matthew 24. So we know he, he, he doesn't have the understanding there. But I found it also interesting in the fact that he stopped even at 118. 
And at that point, it's because he wrote uh, he wrote this in 2017. So there was no historical evidence to go back on, right? Well, what had happened with me was I had by this point the understanding of the revelation of the 14 years. And I started looking at these things. And I start, you know, as you start reading and and looking into these things, because we knew there was revelation still in Psalms. And Psalms 18 talked about being compassed about and the earth shook and the Lord heard from his temple and he bowed, he bowed the heavens and he came down and darkness was under his feet and the channels of water, the foundations of the earth were seen because of a big rip in a part of the earth where a massive <coughs> tsunami, earthquake, all these things take place and he sets them in a large place. Um, I don't know about you, but do you know of anything like this that has happened? I don't. I don't. This is clearly prophecy. You go on to read what happens to these people and, and the power that the Lord gives this group of people. Bending bows of steel in their hands. It kind of sounds like it lines up with, with what we were speaking about in the last video. <coughs> As if, you know, at the end of those first seven days. Remember, the 50 days will begin by seven. The escape will take place. There's going to be a seven-day period, which I believe is what plays out as Psalms 18. What do you think is going to happen when tens of millions of people vanish from the face of the earth? There's going to be some screaming, some crying. The earth is going to be ripped open, all sorts of things. But we also know <clears throat> a group is going to be chosen and is going to work for the Lord as well. Powers being given and so forth. We've talked about Psalms 18 a lot over the years. Well, when I had discovered this, this was only the beginning, of course. The, the other point was to go to Psalms 118 to see if there was a connection that followed Psalms 118. And what a lot of people want to do is when you follow the idea of J.R. Church and think that you can look at it historically, well, then they think now because we're in 2022, oh, it's got to be 122. You see, and last year they thought, oh, 121. And the year before they thought 120. Well, <laughs> I mean, what is it, right? It can't be all of them. So what I had discovered was they were immovable. They, it, it doesn't start until it starts. It's not, a, it's not like 18 is supposed to represent 2018. Okay? 123 isn't supposed to represent 2023. It's a period of chapters that represents a 14, 15 year period of time. That's what's happening. And it starts with a period called above the 14 years. This will take place first before the 14 years begins. And as we've talked on this in the past, and you go read Psalms 18, and you come over here, and you see like um, verse 5 in Psalms 118, and I called upon the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Well, when you go to Psalms 18, it starts with him being in distress. And by about verse, what is it, 17 or something like that, he is now set in a large place. And it goes on to talk, the Lord is at my side. My salvation has come. See, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle, is in the tabernacles of the righteousness. The right hand of the Lord doth valiantly. And it goes on to say, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. And what do we know follows? What didn't we know follows was Psalms 19. We go to Psalms 19 and look at what we see. In Psalms 19, we know is a typology of the Lord now what? The Lord now here beginning the 40 days of the Son of Man. So while this the escape had already happened. 
<clears throat> the wedding the seven day wedding took place in heaven and it relates to a seven day period of time that will take place on the earth when he's finished with the wedding what does he do he's ready man he's ready to come out and it said their line it says it says in psalms 19 starting in verse 4 their line has gone out through all the earth their words to the end of the world in them he hath set a tabernacle for the son which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber rejoicing as a strong man ready to run a race his going forth is from one end of heaven and his circuit that word we now know very very well this one is the circuit of the sun and his circuit unto the ends of it and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof what do we know about this we know this is the circuit of the sun which relates to the turning of the sun the turn of the year it reached its furthest point and now it's going to return and that is the winter solstice this is lined up to the beginning of the 40 days of the son of man when he's coming out of his chamber ready to run a race well guess what what if we go into some of these others and see what we can find see how this starts well if we go to for example um well we've been talking about this a lot lately right we can go into john chapter 7 and in john chapter 7 the jews feast of tabernacles we've been talking about it as the uh as hanukkah which is a second tabernacles created for the jews and what happens he says his time has not fully come yet and then he shows up in the midst and this year in the midst of the jews feast of tabernacles is the circuit of the sun you see his seven days have passed for his wedding and he's showing up in the midst you go to john chapter 8 he's there standing before this woman i believe this is that worker part that we've talked about for those that don't know it's too much to go into but then what do we see after he's there standing with her he then says in john 8 i am the light of the world is the heading right then spake jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life it's the same thing we go into the the story of genesis and i don't want to go into i don't want to get away from psalms i'm going to do the psalms and then i'm going to go into john and genesis and along the way we'll touch in zachariah a little bit of hosea and the others along the way as well but when we come into genesis chapter 7 <clears throat> john chapter 7 right and we go into genesis chapter 7 and what do we see in chapter genesis chapter 7 for yet seven days and then we come down to verse 10 and it came to pass after seven days and what happens after seven days the doors of the ark were shut and what happened the 40 whoops the doors of the ark were shut and the 40 days began as jesus said in luke 17. where do the 40 days end in relation to john uh, in relation to genesis 8 well you could see the 40 days are even into chapter 8 and at the end of the 40 days so now here we are at the end of the 40 days and the 14 years are about to start and where are we genesis chapter 8. where were the 40 days with the son of man when he came out of his chamber ready to run a race psalms 19. it would be like the the beginning portion of it right <coughs> they're all really close what you need to understand when you read these things as well i never mentioned this earlier is that when you read it doesn't mean that the event for example of whatever chapter to year the event taking place could be at the beginning of the year it could be something around the middle of the year it could be something right near the end of the year or maybe the chapter just covers the entirety of the year of of the events that we know take place at that time okay so there's a little bit of discernment but it does take place in that time frame so we see this now with 40 days and what happened 
he came out of his chamber ready to run a race right so in this case he's ready to start his 40 days in this case he had the the seven days had taken place here his 40 days ended right here in john chapter 8 we see the same thing as we did in psalms 19 he's now the light ready to run his race coming as the light to the world you see because the light is the mark group mark is the one he's coming to shed light into the world on this luke group that's the bride of christ that's gone they're the spirit group we're going to talk about that as we get into john and genesis events more so let's go across and the reason i want to go across just for the beginning is because of these events that are in this period of time that we're talking about right now when we come into um exodus 34 well you guys all know that one very well in exodus chapter 34 we get a very 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 important piece of information that tells us in verse 22 that the observing the the doing of the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering will be at the year's end this year's end of course is the exact same circuit of the sun year's end and how do we know because it's the feast of ingathering i think even the wording the hebrew lettering gives it away as well six months plus 14 days which would make it the seventh month 14th day very 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 telling for us so which is the year's end at the circuit of the sun we've talked about these things we've shared on these things and where is it well exodus 14 chapters go well actually even goes to 15 chapters <laughs> actually 16 because it even starts with this goes in reverse with the events of things that are that are broken down in the end of days that are talked about and it just so happened that it starts with the observing of the first fruits of the wheat harvest hello well what else do we have well this one we just shared the other day as well right judges chapter 15. <coughs> in judges chapter 15 it's one that goes in reverse and you'll notice it has 21 chapters so for me it was a big deal because when i saw 21 chapters i was trying to discern it like john right like the gospel of john 21 chapters so this is the only book with 21 chapters maybe there's a connection it wasn't till i read the book of Ju of judges and i started making notes of things that we understood as i told you earlier of events that play out during the 14 years that i realized am i seeing things what is going on here and i realized that the book of judges went in reverse also and the first one that really stood up i mean there were things along the way going in reverse that stood up but they weren't beginning things they were end things and i thought what the heck is going on well then i got to chapter 15 which would be what one two three four five six seven chapters to years one two three four five six seven which means if this was a chapters to years if i was understanding it in reverse it should really give us a clue and a really strong one at that because it's in reverse so there's got to be something very detailed in there for us and look at what judges chapter 15 says i'm not going to go into all the places of judges 15 again this would be an eight hour video my wife was laughing i went in and i was detailing some of the places and she's like uh so you're doing like a four hour video today and uh i'm like no i'm not going to cover absolutely everything it would be impossible so look at judges 15 right out of the gate verse one and two but it came to pass within a while after in the time of wheat harvest that samson visited his wife and uh, his wife with a kid i will go into my wife into the chamber but her father would not suffer her to go in him to go in and her father said 
I verily thought that thou had utterly hated her. Therefore I gave her to thy companion, his friend. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray, instead of her. Well, we know this is a typology. It's like a story of, of Jacob. And it's the same layout in the timeline because what happened? Jacob worked seven years expecting to get Rachel, but got Leah. But who did he really want? He wanted the fairer, younger sister. So in this case, here it is at the time of the weed harvest. Hello. What did he do? He wanted to go into the chamber. Hello. <laughs> And he went with the older sister who was not the attractive one. That's the Gentile bride Leia type. Hello. But in this case was given to his companion, which I believe is like a typology of John. Does that mean Jesus is going to hate us and doesn't want to be with us? No. All right. But his companion, like John, spirit filled. The first group is the spirit filled. So maybe given to the Holy Ghost. <coughs> so. What do we see? Time of wheat harvest. What do we see? Him with his wife, and it's the older one, like a Leah one, and it's going into the chamber. But what did we see in Psalms 19? In Psalms 19, it was him coming out of his chamber, rejoicing as a strong man, ready to run a race. As if what? As if this part was now over, and he's now what? now coming to run the race and it's the part of his 14 uh his 40 days as the son of man who comes first what do you see even happens in ezekiel in ezekiel chapter 33 everybody knows that one very well and what do we see the typology of listen to what it says son of man son of man a typology as the son of man is this typology that Ezekiel is playing. And what does he have to do? He's to go out and warn the people. Whoever he doesn't warn, their blood is on him. If they've warned and they've not taken heed, the blood is on them. Hello. All of it, these chapters to years lined up and give us the details of these events that are a part of this 50 day to that 14 years beginning. In every single case, the events that we have understood that pay, take place in that period of time play out. Well, let's keep going in Psalms, okay? Check this out with Psalms. I did not know this with Psalms, okay? I had discovered these things with the Psalms. And then about a year later, I was sent an email about something called the Song of Ascent, of Ascents, or they call it the Psalms of Ascent. And what it is, is it says it's Psalms 120 to 134, but in the Septuagint, this is the correct way even, which is 119 to 133. And when this was sent to me, my jaw hit the floor because what did I have? 119 to 133. It was 15 chapters of the Psalms of Ascent. And I had them as the 14 years of tribulation and the final Jubilee year. I was floored. I had never heard of it before. What was it? It was no different than finding things like this and people using the same type of wording, but we had never read it before. It was the same thing going on. I had discovered this, this count within it, and it turned out there was 15 chapters understood in this prophetic sense called the Psalms of Ascent. It was wild. It's so wild to understand. Well, now let's take a step forward in the Psalms, and let's see what happens when we go to Psalms 124. So. Psalms 19 is year one of seals, two, three, four, five, six. What you're going to discover in Psalms 24 
is Psalms 24 is like being at the end of the sixth year of seals. And what do we read? Listen to what it says. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The fullness of what? The fullness of the Gentiles. Do you remember what even Luke said? In Luke chapter 21, how do we know this timing? Well, you're going to see it beyond just this, but what did John, what did Luke tell us? That uh, Lord's wrath in 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So what did he say after them fleeing to the wilderness because Jerusalem is about to be destroyed, which means the beginning of the 14 years starting. He then says, for these be the days of vengeance that all things, meaning all of tribulation, all details of tribulation, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to them that are with child and them that give suck in those days, for there shall be a great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and they shall be led captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. When's the time of the Gentiles being fulfilled? The end of seals. The end of seals. The fullness thereof. The time to now bring in the great multitude rapture once the six years of seals are over. And listen to what it says. Verse 3 of Psalms 24. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Hello. And, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Where are they going? Up to the hill of the Lord. Who gets to go? Those who have clean hands. What is this group of clean hands? Those who had to make their hands clean. And where are they going to be going? They're going to go up the hill of the Lord. What's the hill of the Lord? The hill of the Lord is heavenly Mount Zion. When does heavenly Mount Zion come? When do they see it coming? Why are they asking who's going to get to go up? Well, the end of Revelation chapter 6 tells us, right? The end of the sixth seal, the end of the sixth year of seals, the world is freaking out. Everybody's hiding in the caves and in mountains saying, rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath has come. What on earth are they looking at? We know what they're looking at. They're seeing the mountain of the Lord come down. And only those, because it was seals, they had to make their hands clean. And we know this group even in Revelation chapter 7, which would be the following year, we see those that got to go up. And it says, who are these with the white robes? And these were the ones who had to what? Made them white. These were the ones that had to wash their robes. They had to launder their clothing. They had to be made white. And they were made white through the tribulation of seals. And it's this mountain of the Lord that they see coming. Let me get back up there. That they see coming that they're asking who's going to get to go up to the mountain of the Lord. Well, let's take it a step further. What if we go to Psalms 25? Psalms 25 would be the equivalent now of what? The seventh year of seals. So in the seventh year of seals, it should be a group being taken, a group escaping, a, you know, events taking place that we know relate to the end of days. Well, let's go see what it says. In Psalms 25, verse 10, 
listen to this all the paths of the lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies to those that keep his covenant that must mean he had to have made a covenant now when do we know the lord is going to make a covenant he makes his covenant in the seventh seal that about half an hour of silence that about six months that second half of the seventh year of seals is when he makes a covenant and we know that he makes this covenant with all nations because as you're going to see later as we get to uh, zechariah chapter 11 and zechariah chapter 11 is directly related to when satan is cast down you see right here in zechariah 11 verse 10 and i took my staff even beauty and cut it asunder you're going to want to remember those words too and cut it asunder that i might make break my covenant which i made with all people and it was broken in that day you see he made a covenant when would he make a covenant do you think as he's getting ready to rule from heavenly mount zion of course he's getting ready to rule from mount zion we we've talked about this we've seen this in the scriptures right we know this even from um from uh daniel chapter 7 when the four beasts and the antichrist was killed and right and the others had their dominions taken away and one like unto the son of man comes and dominion was given unto him this is him having come down on heavenly mount zion <laughs> who's going to ascend the mountain of the lord the rapture group is and so he's got his covenant there and then what do we see psalms 25 starting in verse 14 the secret of the lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant mine eyes are ever toward the lord for he shall pluck for he shall pluck we know that word pluck don't we that word pluck is what well that's in the hebrew but if we go to revelation chapter 12 and we go to verse 5 at the part where the caught up rapture is the word for harpazo which is rapture is pluck <laughs> when does the rapture of the great multitude take place <clears throat> you got it same time as psalms 25 seventh year and what does he say he plucked them out of the net a net that catches animals do you know another word for a net how about a snare how about luke chapter 21 who were those who got caught in the snare those who missed the pre-trib right those who were asleep the world the gentiles during the time of the gentiles and what happened to those who weren't ready well we read it right here in luke 21 35 starting in 34 and take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with the suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life so that that day come upon you unawares for as a snare see a trap right that bent stick right a snare is that bent snake stick which is used for what like a snare like catching animals like a net shall it come upon them uh, for as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth there's another connection he makes a covenant he rescues a group he plucks them out from the snare he says in verse 16, turn thee unto me and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. Go into verse 18. Look upon mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many 
and they hate me with cruel hatred. This is all the affliction they were going through through seals. Verse 20. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Ready for this? To snatch away. <laughs> to snatch away, to pluck. What is the definition of harpazo? It's to pluck and it's to snatch away. It means to snatch out of the way with force. You see? Redeem in verse 25. Uh, Psalms 25 verse 22 ends with, Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. When does that happen? You got it. Seventh year of seals for the house of Israel. Lines up, guys. Over and over and over. This is what we're going to keep doing. It's going to keep lining up and going and going and going. Well, now watch this. Let's jump to Psalms 119. Uh, sorry, sorry. Let's jump to Psalms 29. What do we know that happens by the time we get to Psalms 29? By Psalms 29, we know, as I told you, it was explaining to you guys earlier, and this is why, we know this is when Satan is cast down. Satan's cast down. The pit is open. Um, he cuts the, the agreement. He cuts the covenant asunder. Uh, uh, he, he, the, he's cut off, right? Just like we saw Psalms 90 and 10 being cut off. Let's go to Psalms 29. Again, like I said, I'm not going to cover everything. We would literally have an eight-hour video. And look at what we read. Psalms 29, verse 5. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Wasn't that interesting? What if we go to Zechariah chapter 11 and let's see what happens in the exact same chapter to year time frame in which Zechariah chapter 11 equals the same chapter to year as Psalms 19 uh, Psalms 29 which is after 10 years in the 11th year right and look at what happens verse 1 Zechariah 11 verse 1 open thy doors o Lebanon that the fire may devour thy cedars howl fir tree for the cedar is fallen because the mighty are spoiled <laughs> howl o you oaks of bashan for the forest of the vintage is come down who's this talking about we've talked we've talked about this in recent videos over the last couple months right we've talked on this a lot over the years as well this is satan being cast down he is now fallen when is this period of time? Everywhere. It's everywhere telling us the exact same time. What do you have? Revelation chapter 12, 1 through 5, <coughs> is the seals till the rapture of the great multitude. You have 1260 days, which is the first half of trumpets, which puts you at about 10 and a half years in. And during this three and a half years, while the city and the streets are re being rebuilt, during the first half of trumpets, there's a battle in heaven, as I was talking to you guys about earlier, between Michael and his angels and the dragon and his angels. When they're cast out, it's the first woe, and we know that it's about the time of the 11th year or 10 and a half years in to the tribulation, because at that point, those who were in the land being protected, things were going great, while things were still happening on the earth they're now cut off and they're flying on the wings of an eagle for the last three and a half years into the place protected in the wilderness what did zachariah 11 say the same thing as psalms 29 the time of the cedar when the cedar has fallen chapters Two years, guys. It happens over and over and over. <clears throat> Let's go to Psalms 32. What is Psalms 32? 
it's that 14th year of trumpets let's go see what psalms 32 has to tell us psalms 32 psalms 32 starts in verse 2 says blessed is the man unto whom the lord imputeth no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile who is the group that worked the time of trumpets it was the 144,000 remember it's the 144,000 and this is saying at the end of it blessed is the man whom the lord imputeth no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile so it's two groups of of people that the lord is blessing and the second one is the group relating to those with no guile we go to revelation chapter 14 the conversation being had about the 144,000, and what do we read about those who are the 144,000? we read in where is it there in revelation 14 4 there are they which were not defiled by uh, with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb wheresoever he goes is goeth these are they which re- were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto god and unto the lamb and in their mouth was found no guile for they were for they are without fault before the throne of god we're going to cover these guys in a little bit not too much detail but we're going to show them when it comes to john you see because these guys are also another first fruits they're the they're the first fruits of the grapes they're the worker first groups for trumpets time and they're the 144,000 of whom there was no guile found in them we know the guy one guy who is considered with no guile told by jesus when it was with philip and nathaniel philip says they found philip findeth in john 145 Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Okay? And when Jesus comes to him, it says in verse 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. And what do we see? It was was Philip that found him. Philip, 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 Philip. Philip, just in these few verses, his his name is used what? One, two, three, four, four or five times his name is used just in these verses of this context right here. And you're going to see why. You're going to see why because Philip is a relation to the 144,000 as well. well. We'll share that once we get there. But look what else we see as we go back into Psalms 32. Um, in Psalms 32, verse 6, this is the 14th year of trumpets. For this shall every one that is goodly pray unto thee. Listen to this. This is awesome. In a time when thou mayest be found, surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh un to him did you hear that you see when he's going to be found when the whole world can come to him when he returns first of all feet down on the mount of olives they're not going to be able to come to him right away what happens there's a flood of great waters what year does this flood of great waters represent the 14th year what do we know about the final year of tribulation the 14th year of trumpets or the 14th year which is the the seventh year of trumpets what do we know about that when the lord returns feet down on the mount of olives well we know for one if we go to john chapter 20 
John chapter 20, what do we see John chapter 20? Well, John chapter 20 is in relation to the end, right at the very end is the typology at the end of the 13th year to the start of the 14th year. <clears throat> and what do we know about this? Well, check this out. For those that don't know, we, I've talked about this uh, a, a few times in the past. When you go to the resurrection story of Luke, Mark, and Matthew, the resurrection story in all three of them take place in the last chapter. Okay? In the last chapter of the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke is the resurrection story. All three of them. The resurrection story is in Matthew, uh, is in the last chapter of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. However, in John, it's in chapter 20. Why, why did they put it in chapter 20? Why was, you see, and this is, when you discover these things, you realize that these, that these crazy people who can think that all word was inspired and breathed by the Holy Spirit, but they don't believe that those who labored in, in giving us chapters and verses and so forth, oh, no, no, those guys have nothing to do with it. They were not Holy and Spirit inspired. I absolutely guarantee you, this chapters to years proves that they were Holy Spirit inspired. <clears throat> and what do we see in John chapter 20? Well, it was in chapter 20 instead of 21. Right off the bat, that makes you scratch your head. Well, for me, that was the discovery. That began the discovery for me <clears throat> that John's gospel was a chapters to years gospel on its own it had the 21 chapters but for some odd reason it had his resurrection at the in chapter 20 representing the end of the 20th year or the end of the seventh trump uh, the sixth trumpet or the end of the 13 years of tribulation so it'd be like right on this line right at the end of the 13th start of the 14th <clears throat> and this was one of those moments when I had realized, like, Zechariah. You know, I'll tell you the story of Zechariah in a bit, but with Zechariah, it was 13 chapters, and at the start of the 14th chapter was the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. In all of these places, you know, we see that um, it was the story of Jacob. The story of Jacob was seven years that he worked. Then he worked for seven more for to complete Rachel's time. Then he worked six for the cattle, which made 20 years. And at the end of those 20 years, he made a covenant for that final year. But it was done after 20, and then he makes a covenant with his father-in-law. And I started to realize, and as I was praying to the Lord, and you guys remember this event that happened in the shower, and it was a Holy Spirit drop because I was thinking, this just does, something's missing. It, it just doesn't fit that it's all, that it's 14. I mean, it's 14 years, but it seems like there, it, it, there's, there's a final year that he takes care of things. <laughs> and, and it just, it didn't dawn on me because I was just 14 years, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. And I had this Holy Spirit drop that moment in the shower. You guys remember this. And it just all of a sudden, in just in my mind, my voice in my mind, not hearing audible or anything like that, I just thought the words, and it was a Holy Spirit drop, 13 and then the 14th. And I thought, what? 13 and then the 14th. And when that happened, when I repeated it once or twice in my head, Whew. six places of scripture started flooding my mind that showed it was after 20. It was after 20. It was at the end of 13. And at the start of the 14th, he's there on Mount Zion and he's dealing with everything in that final year. He's renewing his covenant and destroying all of the enemies in that final year. And I went, wow everything started flooding into my mind and every piece every single piece 
was 13 years and then the 14th they uh, uh abraham and and had ishmael abraham was 86 now he's 99 years old ishmael's 13 he circumcises makes a covenant with the with the lord and at the following year when he turns 100 boom the promise is born it's incredible it was everywhere and that's when i realized john is a chapters to year book and it wasn't <coughs> until oh i think maybe about three and a half years ago now <clears throat> excuse me maybe two and a half but i think i can't believe it's been three and a half might be three and a half years yeah it's already been two and a half for COVID, so it must have been about three and a half years ago what had happened is some of you guys know the story too i was talking with a sister and she was telling me things that she was looking at in the book of genesis and how she thought they related to periods of time within the timing of tribulation but where she was relating them she was trying to say they were trumpets like she thought it was a period of trumpets and i believe if i remember correctly it was stuff within here in the earlier part and i thought that no no that's not making sense you've, you've got them in the wrong place and and so i started going through it and as we're talking i just poof <laughs> dropped into my mind again this one of those spirit drops and i said oh my goodness i said you have no idea we just help me understand genesis now has the chapters to years being revealed to us just like john john has 21 chapters and in genesis it goes to 21 chapters in the revelation of it and i said is this possible so you know what i did to confirm it i said well we already knew genesis 7 john 7 john 8 genesis 8 and this whole thing with the flood in relation to the 40 days of the son of man and him starting his 40 days <clears throat> just like he had said in luke 17 and then i started going through it and we're going to cover some of genesis in a little bit but i said real quick i i looked at some of these things briefly and i said wait a second if i go to genesis 21 let's see if it will end which is kind of like you know the end of john 20 to the to the start of john 21 like right on that line so if i go to genesis 21 is there something that's going to be right at the beginning of john 20 uh, of genesis chapter 21 that would be similar to the promise now coming to christ now coming and look at what happened to genesis 21 the birth of isaac when he was 100 years old which was what exactly 14 years later from when he had his first son ishmael it was mind-blowing it was so awesome and it just so happened it was at the beginning of chapter 21. so incredible right <clears throat> so what happened remember we were talking about um uh, uh 32 right in psalms 32 what was the word <clears throat> what was the the verse that we were talking about with this snatched away plucked up and everything else that had already happened we saw that it was floods of great waters well we're not talking here now about the 40 days of the son of man and him being like this this noah type of just the 40 days we're talking about the 14th year <clears throat> and what do we know happens as the lord returns at the very end of 20 right in in doing this thing again and then returns feet down on the mount of olives what do we know happens in that final year well we're going to see the glimpse of it starting in chapter 20 but remember in the gospels luke mark matthew right it was at the end of each gospel but it's also what the discourses luke's is that 40 to 50 days before the 14 years mark's is the seven years of seals matthew's is the seven years of trumpets and what do you get in matthew's discourse at the end of the six years of trumpets we see the abomination this is when satan is cast down as we were talking about in that 10 and a half year time frame 
and he's going to step into the holy place that was rebuilt by the Lord. We're going to get to that, don't you see? You'll, you'll see. And then what do we see? We see all of this chaos, the Antichrist false prophet there again. They were to flee, right? When this happens, what are they to do? They're to flee again. So there's that fleeing into the mountains, that fleeing into the wilderness for that three and a half years that we talked about to the end of the 14th year. But what happens in that 14th year? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, they're going to see the Lord coming down now, feet down on the Mount of Olives. And what do we know happens? It starts the days of Noah. You see, this is what confuses people. This days of Noah is only spoken about in one discourse. And it's this one here of Matthew's discourse. And it's all about as it was in the days of Noah. Well, the days of Noah start the tribulation with that 40-day typology. And in the end of tribulation, it's going to be a typology of the entirety replay of the one year of the days of Noah. And so that one year, <coughs> which will be as the days of Noah, when the Lord returns, what? At the start of the 14th year, and there's what? A great flood of waters. And what do we know from John chapter 20, which is as if the end of the 13th year to the start of the 14th? What happens when we go to John chapter 20? Look at the wording we get for his resurrection story. The word taken away. When the stone was taken away in verse 1 and in John verse 2, uh, and saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher. So the stone taken away, the sepulcher, the, the, the Lord taken away. And what does it mean? To take up, to take away, specifically to sail away. That means way anchor. And it comes from the root comparative Hebrewism word 5375, which is the word NASA. Yes, that's where they get it from. NASA to lift off, to carry away. And when we go into that word in Genesis chapter 7, for now, not the beginning story of the tribulation, but for the final year, year story of the tribulation, look at what it is. Chapter 17, verse uh, chapter 7, verse 17. Then the flood was 40 days upon the earth. The waters increased and bear up. There it is. And bear up the ark. What is it? The beginning of the days of Noah. But it is the final one, which is Matthew's perspective, which is the same timing as John chapter 20 of the Lord's perspective of the chapters to years when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. Let me show you one more thing about Psalms 32 and the wording that we had in it. In Psalms 32, there was one more piece I wanted to show you. And look at what it says. In verse 28, it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Why doesn't he tell them to preach anymore? Because when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and the world will see him and the whole world will know at that time, there will no longer be a need to preach the word of God. It will only be to teach. And this brings us right back to the Gospels. And when you go to the Synoptic Gospels of Luke in the resurrection story, look at what you see. This is the group of workers that are going to go out during the time of the 40 days of the Son of Man and then during seals. And he tells them that repentance and remissions of sin, remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. We go to Mark's discourse. This is the end of seals. And this is the 144,000 is the typology being commissioned here. And he tells them, in mark 16 starting in 15 
And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. You see that? Preaching. Preaching. When you go to Matthew, check this out. Matthew is, you see, these things are all prophetically built in to the Gospels. And when you go into Matthew, it's now the 12 tribes that are sent out to teach the world the ways of the Lord. And listen to what he tells them. All power is now given unto him in heaven and in earth. It's prophetic. And in verse 19, listen to what he says, 19 and 20, the end of Matthew. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Do you know why? Because he's there now until the end of the millennial reign. He's there until the end of the world. There is no need for preaching. He has been given all power in heaven and on earth. This has been taught in a spiritual sense right now. But it is a prophetic is to come for the 14th year of tribulation, the seventh year of trumpets. <clears throat> and when it's over, they will be teaching. What did it say in 32? They will now go out and teach. See how incredible this is? It just keeps going. Look at this in, let's go to now Psalms 33. Watch this. Psalms 33. Watch this. Starting verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Where's that one? At the end of the tribulation, at the beginning of the millennial reign in the Jubilee year. Because the whole earth will now know that he's there, standing in awe of him. Blessed, 33 verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. You see? Every single one of these, and I just touched on some of them. They're doing the exact same thing, telling us the same story. <clears throat> now watch this. Let's go into the 100s of Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 124. And let's see what Psalms 124 has to tell us. It's nice because some of the Psalms are short, right? So it helps. Listen to this. Remember what we read over in Psalms 24? About them escaping the snare, right? About, about them being saved, about them being escaped out. Remember that? Let me show it to you just as a real quick reminder. Clean hands, those who get to go up. Here it is, 25. 25. Covenant and testimonies, pluck them out of the net. Those that were in affliction, delivered them. Snatched them away, plucked them, they escaped out. Okay. 25 was right here in the rapture year. Listen to what 124 says, which is as if saying the end of the sixth year of seals. <clears throat> Listen to this. Actually, let's start in verse 124, verse 2. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up quickly when their wrath was kindled against us. When was the beginning of their wrath kindled against them? Psalms 18, Psalms 118. They would have been swallowed up quickly if the Lord had not been watching over them. One, uh, 124 verse 7, uh, verse 6. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as prey to their teeth, 
our soul is escaped as a bird out of a snare. Uh Uh-oh, look at this snare. As a snare of the fowlers, the snare is broken and we are escaped, rescued, released. But what was the snare, brothers and sisters? The snare in 124 verse 7. Remember, this is as if we're talking about the end of the sixth year of seals. When the Lord, they see him coming and everybody's freaking out at the end of the sixth seal. What was happening during seals? What was happening during that second half of seals? Wasn't there a period of time where people were putting their necks on the line? So you've got a group of people who were saved from their necks being put on the line. And how do you know? Because it tells us it's a metal sheet pounded thin. This snare is not just being caught up like an animal snare, being caught and snared. This one was talking about them being saved from the sword to the neck or guillotine. What? Isn't it crazy? We know a group of people who were putting their necks on the line too, right? We'll touch on them in a little bit. How about we go look at Psalms 125? Psalms 125 is nice and short. This is the rapture. The 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 rapture. What do we know has happened? Of course, the Lord came down on heavenly Mount Zion. Right in in Psalms 24, they're talking about who's going to get to ascend. And look at what they're saying in 25. Psalms 125, verse 1. <clears throat> they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Verse 2. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth forever. Kind of sounds strange, right? What do you mean henceforth forever? We're only in Psalms 125. But remember what happened? The rapture now has happened. The rapture has happened and the Jews have been brought to the land. The rebuilding and all these things are going to take place in the time of trumpets beginning. And what happens when Satan's cast down? What happens when when the cedar and the vintage of old is cast down? He doesn't leave them there. Remember, they're flying out on wings of an eagle to a place protected until the end of the 14th year when they all get to return. You see? So he is there protecting them. He is watching over them. It's only those who have turned or those who have not yet committed to him. So here in 125, uh, we saw that round about his people forever let's see what we got next um of course yeah let's show that zechariah 8. so zechariah chapter 8 is the very first year of trumpets and we can prove this like we saw in psalms 24 as if it's the end of 24 like the end of the sixth year of seals and they're seeing mount zion coming and who gets to go up In Psalms 25, we could see the conversation of the Lord there on the mountains of the Lord, heavenly Mount Zion, and he's there protecting them and surrounding them. In Zechariah chapter 8, which is the beginning of trumpets, (coughs) we see, let me just keep it set up, there we go, and we see in Zechariah chapter 8, which is the first year of trumpets, and says in starting in Zechariah 8 verse 2, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with a great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. Remember, he says this in Zechariah chapter 1, that he is jealous with a great fury, and that he is jealous with a great jealousy. But by chapter 8, the beginning of trumpets, he's saying it past tense now. Because why? Well, listen to verse 3. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Crazy, right? 
How could this keep happening if these chapters weren't Holy Spirit led and inspired by these writers? He tells them what? He tells them to let their hands be strong in verse 9. Thus saith the Lord. Well, first, let's go to verse 8. Listen to this. And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in the true, in truth and in righteousness. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong, ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation, which happened during seals, that the foundation of the Lord, uh, the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. So now it's time that the building of the temple and the rebuilding of the city and the streets and the wall is going to take place. But the foundation was already laid. The temple could not be built without the Lord there. It's it's so incredible. It just baffles your mind as you keep going through this. Let's go to Psalms 126. Psalms 126. Look at this. <laughs> Restore our fortunes is the heading, right? Psalms 126, verse 1. Coffee first. Psalms 121, verse... Uh, sorry. Psalms 126, verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Hello. That's exactly right. When he brings them back, it's the good captivity. It's him taking them back into captivity. We were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. Verse 5 and 6 of 126. They that sow in tears shall reap, joy, shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth with weeping, bringeth precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. What happens? They're now brought back captive to the Lord into Zion. The rebuilding you're going to see soon is going to take place. And they're rejoicing with laughter, with singing. And no more pain. Well, guess what? See that? Remember, we're in the same time frame, right? Zechariah chapter 8. Watch this in Zechariah chapter 8. In Zechariah chapter 8, it reset. I thought it was going to bring it up right where I wanted. In Zechariah chapter 8, let's continue down to read what it says about them in Zechariah chapter 8. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, you're going to see this in a little bit. So remember, this is the beginning now of trumpets. It's the first year of trumpets. He told them in verse 10 of Zechariah 8, he told them that before these days, there was no man for hire nor beast for hire. Neither was there any peace. All right. Holy Spirit was gone. And 14 years began at the red horse rider to him that went out or came in because of affliction, because of the affliction for I set all men, everyone against his neighbor. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord. Verse 12, for the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. I want you to remember that because where are we? Zechariah chapter eight. You're going to notice something when we get back into John and see the conversation in John chapter 15. Uh, da -da -da -da, the rest of 12, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all things. Verse 13, and it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you and you shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Remember, because they're going to be rebuilding. 
verse 15. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. It says, fear not. Then we come down to verse 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth, the fifth, the seventh, and the tenth month shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. What happened? They're now in joy and in gladness. They're dwelling in peace with the Lord in Jerusalem. And what was Psalms 126 talking about? Bringing them back as captives in the land with joy, filled with laughter and singing. The tears will be gone and they will be rejoicing. Over and over and over again. Right? It's beautiful. Let's go into Psalms 127. See, it's a good one. It's a short one. It's a short one. But you're going to want to see this one. Remember, as we were talking earlier, people will always say, because they only think it's seven years of tribulation, and that it's seven years to the Jews. Well, they say that, obviously, as we said at the beginning, because they don't understand who the Gospels are speaking to. This is why we have such a mission to want to share the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to and to understand the timing of the end. It'll, it'll wake up people to prepare them now and to leave info for others, right? But what happens? They believe in the seventh years, this, the, this, the, the, the temple will re be rebuilt. But like the church out there believing seven years, they're in line with Judah. Judah doesn't believe they're going to be destroyed. Yet scripture is filled with dozens of places prophetically telling us they're going to be removed from the land again because of their disobedience. And they're going to be removed from Jerusalem for seven years so that the land can rest. And then what will happen? They're going to rebuild the city and the streets and the temple. But who is here during this time? I just showed you. The Lord is here. They came on heavenly Mount Zion. The Lord is there on Mount Zion. He's bringing them back into the land. Who's the only one that could be there while it's being built? Not the enemy. It's the Lord himself. We've shown it everywhere. That's exactly what we just read in Zechariah 8 for crying out loud. He just told us that in Psalms 126. Let me prove it to you with what Psalms 127 says. And it's a short verse too, a chapter as well. Listen to what it says. It's all in verse one. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Hello. I don't remember the last time I looked at Psalms chapters to years 127. You see, where's 127? You see, there's 150 Psalms, chapters of Psalms that we can go into. And in the revelation of it, it just so happens that 126 lines up with the beginning of trumpets him taking them captive back into the land with joy and peace and then him saying in the very next chapter to year verse that this temple being built could only be done if i'm here the watch over the city could only really be done if i am here you see the whole world having missed the rest of the revelation They've missed a little over half of the revelation, but they have understood things from seals, but because they only see seven years, they overlap everything into the seven years of Jacob's trouble or the seven years of Matthew for Judah. 
They're not smashed together. They're separate. Go read the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments. You see, it's the Lord having come on heavenly Mount Zion who will oversee the rebuilding of the city and the streets. But he's going to be more than that, right? We know he's going to be priest, high priest and king. We're not going to go into all the details of it, but we're not done yet. <clears throat> we're not done yet. Let's go to Psalms 129 and see what Psalms 129 tells us. What is 129? Well, it's that same thing connected to the time of the cedar, right? What happens to the time? Oh, come on now. What happens to this time? Of course, it's the time when Satan is cast down, when he has to cut the covenant, right? When there's a cutting asunder. Well, let's go to Psalms 129 and see what we have. Starting in verse 4, the Lord is righteous. He hath cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Let them all be confounded and turn back that hate Zion. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops. Well, that's an interesting place to put the housetops, right? First of all, you've got cut asunder. If we go to Zechariah again, Zechariah chapter 11, which equals the exact same chapters to year time frame. Watch this, Zechariah chapter 11. What happens when Satan and the oaks of Bashan and, and the cedars are cast down? What does he do? He has to cut asunder the covenant that he had made with all nations. And he broke it in that one day. Why? Well, because Satan has been cast down. The pit is open. And now they're going to start eating the flesh of one another. It's, it gets pretty crazy, right? So we know this all relates to Matthew's portion. Trumpet's time. And we've talked about why the 30 pieces of silver. Because it's the same typology that happened in Matthew. Only Matthew does it give the description of the 30 pieces of silver. Because this is when the cutting off takes place. And Satan will have rule and reign for two and a half years during the battle against the two witnesses. And what happens at the end? He, he does this thing again and he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, which is why at the start of chapter 14, what do you get? Then shall the Lord in verse three, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle, mean, meaning he already fought another one. What was the other one he fought? The one at the end of the sixth year of seals. Remember, he came down on heavenly Mount Zion. Well, what fight was that? We didn't go into it, but it was the Ezekiel 39 war because Ezekiel is also a chapters to years. And Ezekiel 39 is the war when they all stop the fighting that they have against one another, having seen this, being terrified, yet still come to fight against them. And when he destroys them, what happens? They're going to burn weapons for seven years. What seven years are they going to burn weapons? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're going to burn weapons for the First year of uh, seventh year of seals because the battle will be end at the at the end of the sixth year of, of seals. So the seventh year of seals plus six years of trumpets, that's seven years of burning weapons. And what happens in chapter fourteen when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives? The seven years will be over, and when the seven years are over, we know that the plowshares. That, that the weapons that they beat into plowshares, we're told in another scripture that they take the plowshares and turn them back into weapons. And we were told right here <laughs> in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 3, that he had already fought in a day of battle. And this one is the final one. This one is the war. And look at when it is. 
and his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives. Fourteenth year, right? Fourteenth year. So Satan's reign is the half year of the 11th plus the 12th and the 13th. That is the Daniel chapter 12 time times and half a time. There's an and missing between time and times because it's not an addition. It's one, two and a half, which means two and a half years. Whereas Revelation 12, 14 is time and times and a half, which is one plus two plus a half, which is three and a half years. Hence, the final year that was talked about earlier that he returns after 13 and fulfills the 14th year. So in Psalms 129, we saw that he cuts asunder those that hate Zion and upon the housetops. Wasn't that interesting? Because when does this period of time equal? The time when Satan is cast down at mid trumpets. And what happens at mid trumpets, which is, of course, Matthew's portion. So if we go to Matthew's discourse, what happens when Satan is cast down? The abomination of desolation, when Satan is cast down, comes and stands in the holy place. And what are they to do? Let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains, right? So there's going to be the fleeing into the mountains, but he's, he's taking a group on eagle's wings. And it says, let them which be on the housetop not come down and take anything out. And it just so happens the connection of 129 at the cutting off also gives us a connection with the cutting asunder, those that hate Zion, and like grass of those on housetops. Over and over and over again. Now, how about this one? Here's a great one. This is one I talked about a lot in the past because it's such a, a perfect short little one. The final year, the Jubilee year. Remember what we said? It's the same thing. If you go into Ezekiel chapter 48, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 48 real quick. We're not spending a lot of time in Ezekiel. Like I said, I can do eight hours of this. Believe it or not, it's true. What happens at the end in Ezekiel 48? Now, these are the names of the tribes from the end of the East Coast, the tribe of Dan, to the border of Dan, to the border of Asher, to the border of Naphtali, to the border of Manasseh. What happens? It's all over. They're being brought back from the place they were protected from for the final three and a half years. And when the 14th year battle of Zechariah chapter 14 is over, they come back into the land. And what are they given? Their portions of land. You see that? <laughs> well, let's go see what 133 says. In Psalms 133, you see, I'm trying to go through this quick, man. Look at how far we are into this. I know I had to give breakdown of explanation, but man, we're already 212 into this. So Psalms 133, verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Verse 3. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. See that? Chapters to years, brothers and sisters. Events that line up. I, you know, how did I come across all this? I, all I can say is spirit led. I didn't, I, I didn't knowingly understand how to go look through this. You know, I described what it was with Psalms. <clears throat> I explained with um, John and then how Genesis got got put into the mix because of the conversation with the one sister and this uh, massive just boom, I knew what it was. Well, with Hosea and with Zechariah, I was watching a video. This was over four years ago with, um, uh, yeah, I think it was in the around April of 2018, actually. And one of a, a brother in Christ, uh, Tim Foster, many of you guys know his channel. And he was talking about uh, the book of Zechariah and Hosea. 
And he was talking about Zechariah being to the Jews and Hosea to the Gentiles. Or you could say Gentiles, right? House of Israel, right? Because they grafted in and so forth. And it had never dawned on me. I mean, I was only a few months into this back then. And, and I had never understood that. And I said, wait a second. <clears throat> you know, he was talking in Romans and shared in Romans. Is it 9 or is it 11? Let's go have a look. And we see in Romans chapter 9. Or is it 8? <laughs> I know most of them on the tip of my tongue. I don't know everything. Oh, there it is. Romans 9. And this is how we know it from Romans 9, right? So in Romans 9, starting in verse 24, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, as he saith also in Osi, which means Hosea, all right? Hosea, which means deliverer, which is another name for Jesus, okay? Same as Joshua, Yeshua, is from Hosea. I will call them my people, which are not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. Hello. Do you think there's a bride of Christ in there? And so what happened is he had been talking, of course, about Hosea and Zechariah and explaining how Hosea is to the Gentiles and Zechariah is to the Jews. When he said that, I noticed when I went to go look that Hosea, Zechariah had 14 chapters. And I went to Hosea and it had 14 chapters. And I had begun at this point to already know the 14 years very well. And I said, oh my goodness, is this possible? And I went through every book of the Bible to see how many chapters they all had. And only Zechariah and Hosea had 14 chapters. And I said, oh my goodness, I knew that I knew that I knew in that moment, one to the Gentiles or Israel and one to Judah, it was going to be a chapters to years book for each of them. And it did not, of course, disappoint. Hosea starts off. And how does Hosea start off like? Well, remember John? John chapter 8. John chapter 8 to even Hosea chapter 1. John chapter 8, he was standing before the woman. There was nobody left. It was only him. He was crouched over. He looked up. Nobody was there except him with her. And then he says, I am the light of the world and so forth, right? It's the declaration of the beginning of his 40 days. We know this because of the light affliction that happens in northern Israel first at the beginning of the 50 days, at the time of the escape of the bride. And when he comes to begin his 40 days, he's coming as light in the darkness. It's given to us crystal clear, as you guys all know, in Isaiah chapter 9. And then, of course, the second attack, which is the great one that destroys Jerusalem. And that is, of course, from... Uh, from Syria when they come down with the enemies that are with them. But what do we see here in Hosea chapter 1? Remember, in Romans he had said, these who, are, who were not my people shall become my people, and her that was not my beloved, her that was not my beloved, shall be my beloved. What's the connection? The same thing when he goes, wants to go in unto her, the same thing when he comes out of his chamber rejoicing as a bride, uh, rejoicing as a bridegroom, having been with his bride. <laughs> Hosea chapter 1. The beginning. Very important. The beginning of the word of the Lord. So by the Father God to Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea. Hosea means deliverer. Is he not our deliverer? Yes, he is. What do we know happens? After he's our deliverer, when he comes at the end of seals, at the end of the sixth year of seals, he's no longer coming as deliverer. He's coming as savior. Remember, he's coming to rescue. He's coming for salvation. Remember, we, we showed that earlier. For those that are coming to salvation, he's coming to rescue them at the end of the six years of seals. 
And when he does, he's no longer coming as Hosea the Deliverer. He's coming as Joshua or Yeshua the Savior. It's so awesome. This is another direct connection to the beginning of all of this period here that we're showing. That pre-trib escape, the 40 days of the Son of Man, uh, is 40 days as Noah, just the 40-day portion. <clears throat> when he comes at the turn of the sun, over and over and over, connected to the time of the wheat being observed. It just keeps going, guys. Now, check this out. We've covered a lot already as we were going through this with Zechariah. We'll touch a little bit more. But how about John and Genesis? I'm trying not to go too much longer, but there's some great stuff, right? <clears throat> how about how the book of John starts? The book of John starts with, in the beginning was the word. And what happened? The word was made light and came to shine light in the darkness. So the word that was the beginning was spirit. Then the word became light and brought light into the darkness. It's like when Jesus comes to start his for, to begin his 40 days, he's coming to warn and to shine light to those who are in darkness and it relates to the first attack in northern Israel. And who's he coming to to prepare? Who's he coming to warn? Not only Judah, but the world <clears throat> as to what's about to begin. Mark's group is the light group, the creation that was done in days. And then what happens? We come down to verse 14 and it says, the word was made flesh. This is another whole huge, awesome teaching, but we go to Genesis 1. And what do we see? In the beginning was the spirit group, the sons of God, the spirit of God. Genesis 1, verse 1 and 2, which is called the gap theory creation, and we've proven out what it means. What does it mean? It's the first seven that relate just like this, but you'll notice there's no tribulation of the seven. It's just a short period of time of this escape group that are spirit-filled, just like this short period of time that's mentioned in that spirit creation portion. And then what happened? The word was made light. And in this portion of light, <clears throat> what did you have? You had the creation of the males and the females created they them in what? Light. But they fell and they were corrupted and so forth, right? And then we have Adam, who isn't Jesus, but it's the typology because Jesus is called the last Adam, right? And what do we see? The third portion, which is God then formed man, and it was flesh. The word or the spirit made light and then flesh. We have the story of creation, and it's confirmed to us in John chapter 1. Right back to the story of Genesis. It's incredible. Now, we covered John chapter 7 and 8 to the connection with Genesis 7 and 8. So now let's go forward through those. I'm glad I covered those already. <laughs> let's go to John chapter 10. What would John chapter 10 be? John chapter 10 would be at the third year. So in the third year of seals, just like Genesis chapter 10, what do we know takes place at this time? It will have been about two and a half years of World War III. That's the, that's the portion of Mark's um, discourse that says all of those things, right? Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, you know, uh, famines and, and troubles and so forth. It says these are the beginnings of tribulation. That is the first two and a half years of seals, and it equals the, the time of World War III. When you get to the third year, sometime about two and a half years in, the Antichrist will then step forward 
because the whole world will then be crying for anybody to save them. You got to remember this, guys. This is when he will step forward and receive his power to continue for three and a half years, 42 months to the end of the sixth year of seals. It's the chaos. It's the death. It's the famine. It's the devastation of World War III in the first half of seals that is going to have the world crying out for anybody, for any savior to come and save them. So let's see if we get a typology in John chapter 10. Let's go to John chapter 10 and see what we get. Oh, right out of the gate. Verily, verily. Remember what I said? In the chapter, you it, it's to discern whether it's at the very beginning, maybe it's in the middle of the year, maybe it's right at the end of the year. Sometimes it might relate to the entirety of the year. So in this case now, whereas John chapter 20 was like right at the very end, we're looking at John chapter 10, and it's about the midst of the third year, okay? When Antichrist gets his power to continue for 42 months. And yes, it's continued because he was already here because the spirit of Antichrist goes out at the beginning of the 14 years. But the, the, this power and authority to continue when, when he really, the world turns to him and, and the worshiping and the mark and everything come into full play, this is when it happens. And listen to what it says in John 10, starting in verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not in, sorry, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Listen to this. Verse 5, John 10, verse 5. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Okay, so he's now talking about a group of his people who are going to flee from this deceiver coming in from another way, not by the door, into the Lord's sheepfold. This is those during the greatest revival, during the greatest catastrophes, is going to be the time of the greatest revival. And what's going to happen? There's going to be a group who will know that this is not the Savior. And they're going to flee because they know not his voice. Well, who do you know who flees at the time of the Antichrist showing up if Mark is the portion of the light and Mark is the portion of the seals and Antichrist is coming at about two and a half years into seals when he's made known to the world, who then would be the ones fleeing. How about Mark chapter 13, when this abomination of desolation, which says standing where it ought not, this also means placed where it ought not, has nothing to do with the one from Matthew 24. The one from Matthew 24 is mid-trumpets, as we saw earlier. This one is the middish time of seals when Antichrist stands up. And what do they do? It's the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. If you go read Daniel, there's an abomination of desolation in chapter 11, and there's one in chapter 12. They are two separate ones. 11 is Mark's, and 12's is Matthew's. So standing where it ought not, let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. This is the time of fleeing. This is that first flee in the midst of seals this is the one and where is it found in john 10. when when the one who comes in as a thief not by the door but comes in as a robber who is a stranger and those who will have come to be his and committed themselves to christ in the midst of seals they will flee from him you see Listen to what it says about them. Uh, in verse 10, uh, John 10, verse 10, it says, The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill 
and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You see, Antichrist coming to kill and to destroy. Verse 12, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. This is all about the Antichrist. There's a lot more there. You see, when's the time frame? The exact same time we've been showing in the time of seals. What about Genesis chapter 10? Let's go see Genesis chapter 10. In Genesis chapter 10, look at who shows up. Genesis chapter 10, starting in verse 8. And Cush beget Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Shiner, all these places. You see? What does he do? This is when he becomes, he begins to be a mighty one. What's the period of time? You guessed it. Same time. What is this period of time? Well, we know that Antichrist is going to be killed at the end of the sixth year of seals. So when you read about the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 13, when he's given his power and it says, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. What does he do? He goes then to make war against the saints and to overcome them. All kindred, see, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindred and tongue and nations. What was he given? He was given power over the earth. See, this is when he began to be a mighty one, to have power over the earth. And what do we see at the end? What's, what's, 42 months, three and a half years, half of the third year, which is two and a half years in, and the next three to the end of the sixth year of seals. To the end of the sixth year of seals, just for those who don't know, go to Daniel chapter seven. And what do you see? First beast, second beast, third beast, fourth beast, the Antichrist, the one with 10 horns. He reigned, he ruled until his time was up. And when was that? when the Lord is seen coming on heavenly Mount Zion. All the other beasts have their power and authority, right? Their, their, their portions taken away, their dominion taken away. But what happened to the Antichrist? This beast was killed, right? It tells us, out uh, of the ancient of the days, and shall devour the whole earth and tread it down and break it down. And then we see after one more diverse, and judgment shall sit. And what did we see? That the Lord killed the beast. Here it is. Till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. When? When, the, when he's coming down on heavenly Mount Zion. And remember what we were talking about earlier? How do you know the timing? Because it's when the Son of Man is going to be brought to the Ancient of Days, to the Father, and dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people and nations and languages should serve him. Remember, he's going to make a covenant with all nations. It's everywhere. It's perfect every single time. Watch this. What happens if we go into Genesis chapter 11? In Genesis chapter 11, you're now into his first year um, of being the Antichrist. Let's go Genesis chapter 11 and look at what we see. Starting in verse 3, and they said one to another, go to let us make brick. Okay. What's this brick? 
to be made white. When you go read the abomination of desolation in Daniel 11, and it talks about those who will be made white and tried during that time, it's the exact same connection. And what are they going to try and do? Verse 4, uh, and they said, go to, let us build up a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make a, and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. You see what ended up happening? The worshiping in Babel, the worshiping of the antichrist right in the midst of seals but what happened are those who were the lord's people in the time of the greatest revival during the first part of seals they will recognize that he is the liar and deceiver coming in through another gate that is not the door and they're going to have fled and there's going to be people during this time right there's going to be people putting their their necks on the line bringing people in to the Lord still during this time. Watch these connections. It just keeps going. But I'm not going to go too, too, too far. All right? I'm almost done. So let's go spend a little bit in the book of Acts. Let me give you one, for example, here in Acts chapter 15. This is one of our favorites. We've talked about this a lot over the years. In Acts chapter 15. So Acts has 28 chapters. And so I thought, you know, right off the bat, we know this begins everything. So I wonder if 15 has another portion. So it's like 14 chapters and 14 chapters. Well, look at what we read in Zach, uh, in Acts chapter 15. In Acts chapter 15, starting in verse, let's go down to verse 14. Simeon, remember Simeon? Simeon is from Luke chapter 2 which is at the time of the end of the 40 days typology of the son of man from his birth. It says Simeon hath declared, and now Simeon's gone already, right? So he's saying that Simeon had declared ahead of time how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. Sound familiar? Did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof. Who's going to build it? I will return and will build isn't that exactly what we've shown? Isn't that exactly what the Lord himself said in Psalms 127? Isn't that exactly what takes place in Zechariah chapter 8? But what did they say happened first? That Simeon, who was a part of those in the 40-day portion, had told them already that the Lord would come first having taken out a people from among the Gentiles for his name. Isn't that awesome? What, what else do we know about a group of people in Acts? <laughs> well, for example, in Acts chapter 18, you're going to find a group of people. Watch this. In Acts chapter 18, you're going to see, like, I think four times Priscilla and Aquila. Okay, Aquila, Priscilla, it talks about them three or four times throughout Acts chapter 18. Priscilla and Aquila, and then it talks about them again, Aquila and Priscilla. So at least three times Aquila and Priscilla are mentioned in Psalms 18 more than anywhere else in the Bible. Do you think there's a reason for it? Darn right there is. There absolutely is a reason for it. In Psalms 18, Priscilla and Aquila are teaching. They're not the ones going out preaching everywhere, but they're helping those who are preaching 
to give them better understanding of the word. And what you find out in some of our older teachings, we've got an incredible teaching. I don't even know how I found this one. But the last chapter of Romans, the last chapter of 1 Corinthians, the last chapter of 2 Corinthians is about Romans is a group of workers who are going to work for the Gentile churches during seals. Corinthians is another first fruits, which relates to those as the 144 who are going to work trumpets. And then you've got 2 Corinthians, the very end. So what happens in Romans chapter 16? It says, starting in verse 3, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks. Isn't that interesting? We know people that have to lay down their necks because of the metal sheets pounded thin, right? Who have laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles, which means it's taking place during the time of seals. Hello. Why does it matter? Well, check this out. Psalms 8, uh, Acts 18 is what? Filled with Priscilla and Aquila. And by the way, this is the last time you hear of Priscilla and Aquila in the book of Acts. And guess where it goes? To the time of seals, to the midst of seals, when Antichrist had already received his power and authority. And what's happening? Beheadings are started. For all those who have not bowed, for all those who would not worship, will have to flee. Not all those who are only Christians will flee. But the warning in Mark was for the Christians. The warning in John was for the Christians that would now flee. Those that know that he's not the shepherd will flee. But there will be a whole bunch of others that will realize this isn't the guy either, and they're going to flee. They're not going to worship him. But you see what happens? This is the last time Priscilla and Aquila, who put their necks on the line for the Gentiles, it's the last time they're mentioned in the chapters to years. Well, are you ready for this? Because they are the seals workers typology. He is Aquila as the eagle constellation, which is the good side of Dan, who is the overcoming side. He represents, they represent the church of Smyrna. Well, guess what? What if we go to Genesis chapter 11 again? Let's see what kind of typology continues from here. This might freak some of you guys out, by the way. Okay, so we saw this, this building, and people are going to have to turn to it, right? As, as one people throughout the earth, worshiping the time of the Antichrist. Well, some of you might want to hold your breath. <laughs> because look what we find in Genesis chapter 11. What's the equivalent time frame? John, Acts 18. There's a group of people trained up to work seals having been predetermined being hidden right now until the time of the end whose names are reserved. They have places reserved for them in heaven. And in Acts 18, which is the fourth year of seals, is the last time you hear of Priscilla and Aquila, who are the seals workers typology connected to this church of Smyrna. And Genesis chapter 11 has the connection to these people right here. Genesis 11, verse, starting in verse 26. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abraham and Nahor and Haran. Now you guys remember this, right? Abraham relates to God's people, right? Judah. Nahor represents the snorers, the sleeping church. And Haran relates to a group of people pre-trib, but maybe a group of workers. And why is it? They're referenced as mountaineers. And there's a type of people that are called mountaineers that are called 14ers, right? And look at the root word. 
It comes from the Hebrew word 2022. And it's again a mountain range because Haran's name means mountaineer. Why am I bringing this up here? Because listen to what it says when we get to verse 27. Now, these are the generations of Terah. Terah beget Abraham, uh, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And it starts with Haran. And Haran beget Lot. Lot is the reference to seals. Lot is the reference, as you're about to see, referencing the portion of time to seals who Abraham is going to have to go and rescue and goes in with them. Because look what happens. In Genesis 11:28. Haran died. Hello. Haran died. And the equivalent, potentially, of these people are Priscilla and Aquila. Hello. Gets pretty wild, doesn't it? What else? To Acts 18. Genesis 14. Now watch this. Let's now go, as we start to wind this down, I told you, my wife's like, dude, you're, well, she didn't say dude, that's me. <laughs> she says, there's no way you're going to do this in a reasonable time. I, this is as reasonable as I could do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you love digging into the Lord, you can come and you can get this from the description box under the video, this thing right here, and you can go dig into all of these things I'm showing you. I don't have another video coming out for what, four or five days? you'll have time to go in and search and seek it out for yourself that everything I'm showing you is true. Let's go into Genesis now 14. What happens in Genesis 14? Well, it's the rapture year, right? It's the time of the rapture. It's the time of the 144,000, a group of seals, a, a group of workers who are going to help bring in the rapture group as well, right? Let's go into Genesis chapter 14. Oh, what else do we know happens in Genesis in, in the 14th year? Not only the 144 sealed and helped bring in the rapture group, but this is when the Lord is now here, right? The Lord is there now on Mount Zion. And what do we know the Lord is going to be when he comes? He is now going to be high priest and king. Let me prove it to you. Abram rescues Lot. <laughs> That's the heading right off the bat. Okay? Look at what it says. Genesis 14, verse 5. And in the 14th year. What's the 14th year? In the big picture, you see. The seventh year rapture is the 14th year in the big picture. And it's the 14th year of Genesis because Genesis is what? One of the big picture ones with John. So what happens? In the 14th year, they find out, um, let's go down a little bit further, um, in verse 12, Genesis 14, verse 12, and they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, and dwelt in, in Sodom, and his good, uh, sorry, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. What happened? Verse 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants. His initiated, his trained servants. What do you think that typology is? There was 300 of them. But what do you think that typology is? Hello. You see, they're, they're a typology of the 144,000 having been trained up, sealed, before the lot group is brought in, is rescued. And look at what we see. He goes and he saves them, right? He goes and he saves them. Now watch this. He goes and he saves them. If we go into Hebrews chapter 11, look who comes in. Remember at the time of the rapture group, we showed it was the house of Israel. We know it's the great multitude rapture, but the house of Judah is also coming. The house of Judah is represented by Abraham. And look at what happens. We know this is the bride group. This is that pre-trib going first, which is Enoch. We know this is a group of seals workers 
that are here at least, as we talked about in the last video, that are here for at least the 40 days and also some working into the portion of seals that we just discussed as that typology with Priscilla and Aquila. And potentially the Mountaineers 14ers with uh, with uh, with uh, Haran. And look at what we see. So after the 40 days typology with the Son of Man, he doesn't return till what? The end of seals. What happens during seals? We know that the foundation was laid during the time of seals, but it wasn't built yet because the Lord has to be there. So who's the next group to come in? Well, after the Lord comes, it's that seventh year of seals. And what does it says? What does it say? In Hebrews 11, 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into the place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. Now listen to this. Um, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and uh, uh, dwelling in uh, with uh, the heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10, for he looked for a city which had foundations and whose builder and maker is God. Seeing a pattern, right? <laughs> so this is the end of seals. Okay? This is the end of seals. We see Abraham coming in. We see him coming in even in the typology after this rescuing time with Lot in chapter 14. But there's more to the story. Because, of course, we know it's not only related with Abraham and Lot, but it's also when the Lord himself is there. And when the Lord comes at the end of seals, he is high priest and king, just as we were told in Zechariah chapter 6. And look at what happens. Who is high priest and king that suddenly shows up on the scene in Genesis 14? When's Genesis 14? Bang. Seventh year when the Lord is there establishing himself as high priest and king. What do we get? Genesis 14, 18. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine and was the priest of the Most High God, king and high priest. What do we know about this? Same thing we've read before in Psalms 110. When does he become and who becomes Melchizedek? The Lord Father said unto the Lord Son, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord Father shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Hello. Zion had to come. And he's sending the rod of his strength out, which is Revelation 12, 5. Saying, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Verse 4. The Lord Father hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord Son at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of of his wrath who is high priest and king at this point yeshua jesus of course when at the end of seals i don't want to draw it out too too long but we can even go <laughs> into the book of hebrews which is a chapters to year book and what do you see in chapter seven melchizedek shows up <laughs> I hope you guys are getting the picture, right? <clears throat> Look what happens in John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, listen to what Jesus says. In verse 2, starting in verse 2, it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and you know, uh, and in the way, you know. Went to prepare a place, and he's going to come back and receive them. 
What is he coming with? Paradise prepared for them. It's incredible. Who's the only one that has a place prepared in the upper room that's talked about in the, in the, in the synoptic gospels of Luke, Mark, Matthew? Only Mark. Because it's Mark's group that is prepared. It is Mark's group that goes to paradise. And then you talk, it starts talking about Philip. Philip starts showing up on the scene. Isn't that interesting? All of a sudden, Philip starts showing up in the scene in the conversations here. Well, look what happens with Philip. Philip's name, just like we talked about with um, Priscilla and Aquila, their name being mentioned many times in one chapter. Well, in the book of Acts, you see that? In the book of Acts, Philip is mentioned 14 times in chapter 8 alone in chapter 8 alone his name is mentioned 14 times do you know why it's what i explained to you guys in the beginning he's part of the group with no guile what's chapter 8 of acts look at that (laughs) the beginning of trumpets who were those from revelation 14 that had no guile The 144,000, right? The 144,000. Well, watch this. Do you know if you go into uh, Acts chapter 21, do you know what it says? Which is the seventh year of seals, right? Do you know what it says about Philip? Listen to this. Chapter 21, verse 8. What's chapter 21, verse 8 of Acts? The seventh year of seals, when the 144,000 will be visited, chosen, and sealed. And listen to what it says. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea and entered into the house of Philip. What was Philip? The evangelist. Brothers and sisters, do you know who the evangelists are in the end of days? It's also in the Ministry Revealed book. In the seven stages of church history and the is to come, the was, the is, and the is to come. And do you know who they were? They were the great missionary movement, which is related to the church of Philadelphia. Hello. It is the church of Philadelphia that represents the was and the is in the time even to, uh, what is it, the 1950s range even is probably about the better cutoff time is the church of Philadelphia, and his name is Philip, and they're in his house. He is the evangelist, which is called one of the seven. One of the seven. One of the seven what do you think it means? One of the seven churches is exactly what it means. It's amazing. It's just incredible, isn't it? (laughs) <laughs> so again, you know, you see it there in in Acts <coughs> chapter 8 then. And what is it? The beginning of trumpets. And it just so happens the entire conversation. I mean, you're talking one chapter with his name mentioned 14 times. You think there's a reason? Go read it for yourself. I promise you there's a reason. See you guys. It's just, it keeps going, man. It keeps going and going and going. I don't want to keep going much longer. I got to wrap this up. So remember, we saw this in John 14. John 14 equals the seventh year of trumpets and uh, the seventh year of seals. And that is precisely when he comes and receives them unto himself, the place he went to prepare, which is a part of the kingdom of God just like the third heaven is the kingdom of heaven is the one on earth that is for judah for the millennial reign and watch what happens now when christ comes he is now high priest and king right he is melchizedek we saw it even start there in hebrews chapter 7. so we now know that he's there and what will the beginning of trumpets be in this portion right here. 
It'll be the beginning of trumpets, right? The 144,000. It's now the time of the 144,000 who will all go out and look at how chapter 15 of John begins. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, and every branch in, uh, in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he pruneth it, that it may bring more fruit. It's all about him being the true vine and all of those that are a part of him, the vine, which is the grapes, they all must now be bearing fruit or they're going to be cut off. What does he tell them about it? These are all the ones that the father gave him. You see, the father is the husbandman. Jesus is the true vine and the father, the husbandman gave them to him. And he goes on to talk about this, this, the fact that the father gave them to him. And he goes on to talk to them about the love, right? Verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Cause he knows he's about to be cut off. You know, in the typology, Satan's being cast down. He's going to be cut off. And these guys are going to be empowered to go out and do more work in the midst of the pit having open once it gets to mid trumpets. And it says, listen to this. John 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth, I will not call you servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. You see, he goes on to say his time is almost up. He, he had to give them the understanding. It was the father who gave them to him. And he says, the greatest thing is for a friend to lay his life on the line for his friends. And he says, and I am your friend. Why? Because as you guys know, we're not going into it today. He is going to do it because maybe in an upcoming video that I've been playing with in the background for a long time, <clears throat> we'll get into, and we will get into it again, where we know that it was the, the, um, it was the, um, uh, 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 the Levites. It's the Levitical line, the 144,000. It was them who caused the second strike on the rock with Moses, which was referenced through Aaron. It was Aaron that caused the second strike. And Aaron was the Levitical line. It is Christ who is the high priest and king during this time of trumpets. And he is, Levi he is leading the Levites, the Levitical group of the 144, to which at least one or more will fall. But they already belong to the Lord God. They were already sealed with his name. And as you guys know, the story begins to reveal itself in Hebrews chapter 6. They've already tasted the powers of God. They've already been enlightened and have tasted and been partakers of heavenly gifts and of the Holy Ghost. Their names, God's name was already written on their foreheads. If they fall to renew them again unto repentance means the sacrificing of the Son of God again. What? Hopefully new people haven't watched this far because that is a whole other story within the entirety of the story. Of brothers and sisters, we have gone through a bunch, haven't we? Let me finish up as we as we spoke about with Zechariah chapter 14. You see it right here, Zechariah 14, the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives for his second sword, as he discussed in Luke chapter 22. He used the first one at the end of seals, and he will use the second one at the end or at the start of the seventh year of trumpets, and he will return feet down on the Mount of Olives. The world will have seen him, 
it will be as it was in the days of Noah for that final 14th year, and the Lord will destroy all who have come against the Jewish people at that mid-trumpet's time, and their flesh will consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes will consume in their holes, and their tongue will consume away in their mouth. And Judah shall fight also in Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, this is the revelation of the chapters to years that we also call a part of the open books, which also includes Luke, Mark, and Matthew in the revelation to understand the periods of time of the end of days revealed and given to us in the opened books of the chapters to years. Brothers and sisters, I pray this blesses you. I know it's a big one. It's deep and there's a lot to it. But man, this is filled with meat on these bones. I pray you pray on it. I pray you diligently seek it. You begin to understand it for yourselves. And a great way to do it is by going to the things like pre, mid, and post that we know, the, the, the time frame of the Antichrist, the time frame of Satan coming down, the time frame of the Lord's return. All of these things you will be able to pick out and discern within all of these books. It is spectacular to be a part of. We are so blessed, and I am so, so eternally grateful to be a part of this and to be the ones to, to be the one to lead you guys i i can't wait to see what the lord comes next prayerfully in the third heaven standing before him each of us having been accounted worthy or having a place reserved in the third heaven with the lord god father and son and the holy ghost in Jesus' name, I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families. We'll talk to you all very soon. Bye for now.